let's talk about the derivatives of logarithms. So I'll begin with the natural log before we look at uh, the normal logarithms with different bases. Okay. So what's the derivative of natural log of x? So the derivative of natural log of x is basically equal to 1 over x. Okay? So why is it so? So the general formula, maybe let me give you another example to just trick you. d of d of x. What if we've said natural log of x squared? What do we expect to be the answer there? So the answer is 2x over x squared, which can simplify to 2 over x. So we are trying to get the idea there. So the basic idea behind the differentiation of natural log of logarithms is that if you have natural log of u, the derivative there derivative of that is going to be u prime divided by u itself okay multiply by natural log of e now you understand that we've already established to say the natural log of e is equal to 1 why am I saying natural log of e? it's because I know that natural log is has got a base of e there it's a log with a base of e okay so it's very easy so each time <coughs> you have a natural log you work it out like that now let's try to look at uh, a more advanced uh, example or let's try to look at more practice questions to just ensure that we're able to remember so how about y is equal to natural log of x squared feel free to just pause the video and try that one out so obviously we expect that y prime as well it will be the derivative of this part which in this case is 2x over x squared I think we've already talked about this one so it's 2 over 2 over x ok that's repetition what if we say natural log of 3x squared plus 2 <coughs> so all the same What's the derivative of 3x squared plus 2? So the derivative of that is what? So it's going to be 6x now over the actual function itself. 3x squared plus 2. That's the way you differentiate logarithms. I can give you another example. What if we say we have natural log of 7x plus 1? So the derivative there is going to be what? Derivative is going to be 7. We maintain the original function, 7x plus 1. That's the derivative. We can go on to just make it more interesting. All but natural log of this is sine x. <coughs> what do you expect? So y prime so ask yourself what's the derivative of what is in the brackets the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x now we maintain the actual part which is sine of x it's u prime divided by u so our u in this case is equal to sine of x and then our u prime the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x so it's cosine of x over sine of x now we understand that that is equal to cot of x so that's the answer so by the way this is coming from trigonometry identities okay so don't worry much about it if you don't know <coughs> we can go on just before we look at the logarithms the with different bases other than e uh, what of a case where we have natural log of maybe for a practice try out where we have tan of x so if you have tan of x all the same the derivative there is expected to be what so the derivative of tan of x is 6 squared of x 
over the original which is tan of x. That's your answer. What about the case where we have a y being equal to the natural log of uh, the fourth root of x? How do you handle such a question? So you know that you can express that in terms of natural log. The fourth root is the same as x to the power 1 over 4. Now from logs, from basic logarithms, you understand that if you have log of 2 and then x to the power 4, we know that the power of what is attached to the log can become there, the coefficient. So that you have 4 log 2 of x. So the same concept applies to logarithms. The 1 over 4, which is the power of x, can become the coefficient so that you have 1 over 4 and then natural log of x. So whenever you're trying to differentiate something with a constant, what basically happens is you basically pull out the constant. Okay? So you have 1 over 4 and then derivative of natural log of x. So that is going to be 1 over 4. And then what's the natural log of x? Now the, the derivative of natural log of x, we say derivative of x, which we know is a 1, over the function itself. So the answer therefore becomes 1 over 4x as a solution to that question. Just one more. <coughs> Just one more. Uh, what about a case where we have the entire natural log where you have like the fourth root of the entire natural log of now let's make it x squared to just make it interesting what do you do in such a case so what this means is this is equal to the entire natural log of the entire function raised to the power 4 that's what it means so whenever you've got you have any function in brackets raised to a certain power, this is where you apply the chain rule. You can't just bring the four here, it's different. But we know that the two vertices inside can become the coefficient of natural log. But the four which is applying to the entire function can never become the coefficient of the coefficient there. Okay. So we understand from chain rule to say you can rate whatever is in the brackets to be your u. So our u is equal to natural log of x squared. Okay? And then what else do we know? Now we know that now our y will become, if what is in the brackets is u, then we're going to have u to the power 4. So we can differentiate these two parts. So du, du dx, so what's the derivative of natural log of x squared? So we said differentiate this part, which is 2x, divided by the original part, which is x squared. This reduces to 2 over x. And then for the other part, you differentiate dy, du. That is differentiating y in respect to u. So it will be 4u, and the power reduced by 1 becomes 3. So we understand that the chain rule tells us you need to multiply these two parts. So we have 2 over x multiplied by 4u to the power 3. Now, whether is u, we can back what we had natural log of x squared raised to the power now 3 so you can simplify that by combining 4 times 2 which is 8 so you have 8 over x open the brackets natural log of x squared to the power 3 so that becomes your solution okay <coughs> now let's uh, maybe for practice try out this one where you have the natural log and then let's say natural log of what? Yeah, the natural log and then we can say the third root of x squared. Just feel free to pause the video and just try this one out and see what you're going to get. <coughs> okay, so let's look at the basic logs now. What about a case where you have a different base, where you have log 2 for example and then x? What's the derivative of such a function? So y prime becomes, so I said get the derivative of 
of what is attached to the log. So in this case, the derivative there becomes what? So the derivative is just 1. And then I said maintain the function. The function is x, this part again x, and then multiply by natural log of a base, so natural log of 2. So I did emphasize to say on the part where we add the natural log, let's say natural log of x, here we add only 1 over x because we understand that natural log of e, because when you've got the natural log, the base is e. So that is equal to, this part is equal to 1, so it's not necessary for us to show it. And hence, that's why even if you have x squared, on top you have 2x, and then on the bottom you have x squared. This part is still equal to a 1. Okay, so let's look at more questions. What about a case where our y is equal to log 3 base 3 and then 2x squared minus 1? What do we expect there? So our y prime is expected to be, so if you look at what is in the brackets, what's the derivative there? So the derivative that we expect is 4x divided by the entire function itself, which is 2x squared minus 1. Now, not only is that the answer, you need now to add the natural log of the base, which is 3. So that becomes your answer, 4x over 2x squared minus 1 multiplied by the natural log of 3. Okay. Consider a case where you have y being equal to log of 8, and then you have x minus x to the power 6. What do you expect there? So y prime becomes, what's the derivative of what is in the brackets? So we have 1 minus 6x to the power 5 after differentiating that using the power rule, and then divided by the original part itself, which is x minus x to the power 6. Now we need to add the natural log of the base, which is 8. Okay. I believe this is easy now to remember, applying the fact that whenever you have natural log of, let's say the same one, x minus x to the power 6, it's just the derivative of what is in the brackets, which is 1 minus 6, x to the power 5, divided by the original part itself. Now there, you, the difference is you have natural log of e, which is equal to 1, so it's not necessary for us to show it. So, in short, the rules are the same. The rules that apply to, lo to the log and the logarithms are the same. Okay. What matters is how the final result comes out, which is the difference there, because natural log of e is equal to 1, so not necessary. Okay. With the confidence that I have that you've gotten the idea here, try out log with b7 and then sine of x. What do you expect there? So here our y becomes, our y prime derivative becomes, what's the derivative of sine of x? So it's cosine of x and then divided by, maintain the origin of part which is sine of x, now add natural log of 7. The natural log of the base. Okay. Consider a case where you have y is equal to, what about if the same one I say log 7 and then I add tan of x? What do you expect? So where you expect that a y prime becomes the derivative of tan of x is x squared of x and then divided by the original which is tan of x, now multiply by the base the natural log of a base, which is natural log of 7. Okay. With all the basic ones that we've looked at, what about a case where it becomes more interesting and then you get to have your y being equal to natural log and then in the brackets you also have natural log of x? How do you look at that one? This is where you have to now, it becomes interesting. This is why you get to be tested if you've understood what we've been de dealing with. So what we've said is, whatever you have in the brackets is supposed to be differentiated. Now you understand that if you pull out that to be your u, being equal to the natural log of x, you understand that if you differentiate this part, 
the derivative of x is what is 1 and then maintain the function so 1 over x so for what we have them in the brackets here you have 1 over x now divided by the original part so the original entire part in the brackets is natural log of x okay so we have 1 over x so that one is the same as 1 over x multiplied by 1 over natural log of x okay so the answer just becomes 1 over x natural log of x in in, in, sh in short whatever is on the denominator of the top part just joins the denominator there so that you just have 1 over x natural log of x <coughs> with that simple example test yourself more how about the case where you have now natural log and then you have log of 2 x squared in the brackets how do you answer that one so all the same you first of all you need to differentiate what is in the brackets so taking your u to be equal to what is in the brackets log of 2 and then x squared so the basic rule there is what's the derivative of x squared the derivative there is 2x divided by the function itself which is x squared multiplied by natural log of the base so at least the x can cancel out so that you just remain with it eh? over x squared 1 will go so that you just remain with it eh? 2 over x so you have 2 over x natural log of 2 so you have 2 over x natural log of 2 now divided by what so I need to be careful I put the equal sign divided by what we need to divide by the original part which is log base 2 x squared okay now for a part where we've got the natural log the base is e so no need of you adding the natural log part so whatever is on the bottom there joins whatever is on the denominator so you have 2 over x natural log of 2 multiply by log of base 2 x squared okay <coughs> that's what you have as your final result anything more consider a case where you now have the log base 2 outside and then you have a natural log of 2x inside there so feel free to pause the video and try this one out. If you can answer this one, then I believe you are very confident of whatever we've talked about. So whatever you have, first of all, differentiate what is in the brackets. Derivative of natural log of 2x. So take it separately. What's the derivative, derivative there? So derivative of 2x is 2. And then maintain the function itself on the bottom. So the 2 can divide. So you just have 1 over x. Right? natural log of 2 of x derivative of 2x is 2 and then on the bottom maintain the function so you have 1 over x as well in such a case so 1 over x divided by maintain the original part there which is natural log of 2x and then multiply by the natural log of the base natural log of 2 so your answer becomes 1 over x natural log of 2, natural log of 2x. So that's our answer for this case.